Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. We are looking at nine games here on Thursday in the NBA. We've got play of props in this video. Also got best bets up in another video. So go ahead and subscribe to that page if you would and continue to follow along all season. Also want you to head to thelines.com and use that prop finder tool that we have up on the site under that NBA tab. A nice little chart there to make sure that you're seeing all the odds available to you from all these books that are giving us these bets this NBA season. Nate, let's go ahead and get into your first NBA play a prop for tonight. Yeah, I think it's time to take young Jalen Duren here. Um, coming off off a big performance against the Kings team. He had 2015 and six. I'm just gonna take the points here over 13 and a half. Uh interested to take points and rebounds, which is at eleven and a half or twenty five and a half if you combine them. Kind of want to see if DeAndre Ayton's able to go here. He's questionable with an illness. Seems like the points are better if he plays, and the rebounds might be better if Duop Reith plays. Uh, although, you know, either one's intact against Portland, which has given up the fifth most points to centers in their last 30. Kings are number one limiting centers in that span. And so for Duren to go for 20 against them, definitely encouraging. Uh, you know, he had he showed great rapport with, with Jaden Ivey, who got the keys to the offense with Cade out. Uh, I think Cade will be back. I think it was just injury management last night, right? But the Pistons did just trade Alec Burks and Boyan, like as we record here. So that's going to leave some shots up uh, for sure. And Duran, he's so young that you, you think he is not affected by the back-to-back. And that is absolutely the case. In fact, he's had some of his biggest games on back-to-backs. 2020 against OKC, 21-12 against the Spurs, 23-15 all the way back at the beginning of the season against Chicago. Um, his last seven, 15 points per game, 13 rebounds, really good offensive rating, lower usage, but that usage is up to 17% his last five. He's scoring 16 now. Um, and yeah, I mean, you can hate on Aiden, but the last eight without him, the Blazers have a 125 defensive rating. So like he is helpful to have in there. And if he's, if he's out, that's a problem defensively. If he plays, but he's under the weather and he's already a guy who doesn't necessarily give you a lot of effort, um, you know, then then that's kind of easy for Duran to just kind of uh, dominate in, in the paint there uh, on some pick and rolls. Yeah, it's one of those things where the the Hayton on Aiton, um, I can't believe no one has thought of that yet, but the Hayton going on here, spelled obviously H-A-Y-T-O-N, has gone too far. We've gone too far to the other side, right? The pendulum has definitely swung. Uh, jerks like me who keep making fun of how soft he is because he gets one free throw attempt per game as a center are like, <laughs> can you imagine being seven, one and getting one free throw attempt a game? That's the frustrating part to me. And that's the only reason I make fun of him. But to your point, first of all, the, the cal- the heavy, the low calorie stats rather are there for him. And if he is getting low calorie stats, it means he's getting boards. It means he's at least a presence down there. Um, I don't know if he's even a better defensive presence than Duop Reith, but probably a little bit better. So it would be important, obviously, to their defense that he's out there. And and, and I would uh, concur um, that, you know, if he's even if he is, though, I, I was looking at this Jalen Duran stuff, too. So I'm with you on it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go right back to Kaminga, baby. Uh, it's just a tailor made. I, I don't love to. I took him last night as well, and he would have hit except for the uh, 76ers are an awful basketball team right now. Even with Maxi in, um, there's definitely some worry there that Maxi can't score without Embiid. But more importantly to this one, uh, Kaminga 28 and a half. I'm going to throw the assist in there. PRA as well. Uh, I'm not really scared of that. It's just two and a half. And he's gone over this number very, very consistently. Eight of his last 10. Indy allows the most points per game Two power forwards. We know they're one of those teams that we immediately look for quality scoring athletic power forward. If they're playing the Pacers and team like them, then we go right at them. Um, and that's a good starting point. But, you know, the other reasoning for it is he scores more points in the paint inside of five feet everywhere around the basket than anyone on, on the dubs right now. He's the only dude who's scoring around the basket. Even Steph is having more trouble getting to the rim than he's ever had uh, because there's less guys that they have to worry about on the perimeter, obviously. So you, you can't really, you can sell out on him on the three point line, but you can also sell out on him once he comes inside the three point line and leave the shooters for the dubs. So that's why Kaminga is the only one shooting. Uh, five, he's got 5.7 field goal attempts inside five feet. Nobody else has more than like 3.2. Uh, field goals per game that are inside there. So he's he's the dude down there, which is what you want against Indiana, who allows so many points in the paint. They allow the most field goal attempts inside of five feet, and they allow the fourth most made field goals inside of five feet. They do run you off the three-point line. Kaminga's only put up uh, a maximum of like four threes a game. Uh, he's mostly putting about two and a half, three threes a game, making like 50, almost 50% of them, like 40 something percent. So he's, he's been incredible on the, the small um, volume of threes that he's taken. But more importantly, he's also gotten to the line uh, about six times per game over his last 10. He's 
kind of the only dude doing that as well for the Warriors. Um, and the offensive rebounding should be there as well. The, uh, the the Pacers here, fifth worst offensive rebound percentage. Kaminga is the leading offensive rebounder for this team. Even uh, actually, even with uh, Kevon Looney right now, offensive board getter extraordinaire is still about the same as as Kaminga because the minutes are obviously all the way there for Kaminga up above 30 and for Kavan they've they've dropped down to about 20 or less per game because it's they they need some athleticism and say believe it or not size around the rim because even Kavan Looney can't really jump over a paperweight so uh, I I think the second chance points will be there a lot for Kaminga he's going to be crashing every time he doesn't have the ball on offense and isn't the one shooting but I do expect a solid 16 to 18 field goal attempts for him once again uh, which should put him comfortably at the like 22 24 point mark and then all we need is a few boards and uh and assists you already knew josh was taking kaminga i mean it. even even though yeah it didn't work out last night in, in just a weird game now you get the pacers the 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 sieve against power forwards and you got one of the, the hottest scoring power forwards in the league um yeah. yeah no no brainer here however you want to bet it <clears throat> my guy I'll knows me <laughs> i'll take uh jared allen under here under 30.5 pra I'm tacking on the two assists. Initially, I was just thinking points, rebounds, but it's not a huge threat to have three assists, and you get better odds when you tack on two here. Um, and so the Cavs are on a back-to-back, and Allen is managing an ankle injury, which makes me even more confident about this. Um, you know, already putting some units on it. I, I feel pretty damn good. And then I look at the back-to-back splits. He's only played 27 minutes per game, only gotten 12.8 points and 5.8 rebounds on short on those zero days rest versus like 17 and 11 when he has normal rest. And then there's the matchup against the nets, a very good defensive team with Nick Claxton um, at that position. I mean, very good against that position. I will say they're allowing the third fewest points to centers in their last 15 Allen, his last five, their revenge spots, but still only managed 12 and 11 and a half against Claxton and company, you know, had a double double every time, but not really a high usage scorer. And that's the thing, Evan Mobley's back. And, and with Mobley in there, 18% usage, under 15 points per game, fewer, you know, nine rebounds versus 12 rebounds and 16 on higher usage when he was out. He became much bigger part of the offense. Um, you know, I, I just don't think that he's going to, to have that much success against Claxton here. And the Nets uh, kind of just a low-scoring, muck-it-up team. Plus, the Cavs only are scoring 104 as a team on back-to-backs here. So, the Allen is is clearly part of that trend. Yeah, I love this find. Uh, I thought this was a great look, uh, especially because the, this team is healthy. Mobley's out there, and the assists are a great add because you've got um, Darius Garland out there. And when Darius, Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell are, are on the floor, then Jared Allen is not a, an assister by any means. Uh, when they are not on the floor, by the way, uh, if he's only got one of them with him, he does get a, a decent amount of assists, right? Like they go up, but once Garland comes back, uh, they go right back down. Once you've got both the guards out there, there's not enough ball to go around for Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland uh, in that sense. So yeah, the assists are a good add to go to the under. And the fact that, uh, yeah, like you said, I, I love the uh, the find here for him with the the back to back. He was a little bit shook up. I already was saying that, um, in, in talking about this last night where it was like, Yo, the Cavs might sit somebody. They've just had two key players come off of uh, injury for like almost a month. And then they had uh, their Jared Allen, who was questionable in a game that he then went out and played like 28 minutes or whatever it was. So, yeah, th- th- even if, if Jared Allen's in there, this is uh, another like a lot of games and, and a lot of nights for the Cavs kind of scenario. By the way, I do want to mention the, the Dubs have played a lot of games as of late. I do know that for the coming a bet. It's also why I like coming a bet even more, to be honest, because uh, the fact that he's such a young dude playing on a team that's played a, a bunch of games in the last week. But closing it out here on one that I don't think we're going to agree on, <clears throat> and I'm only putting a half a unit on it because this might be insane. And it might just be this like blind, like power forwards, no good against Minnesota. But I'm going under 52 and a half PRA for Giannis Antetokounmpo. And the main reason here is because he's playing the Wolves, obviously. I would prefer this game to be at Minnesota because they are insanely good at home on defense and not nearly as good on the road. Um, And so that's why this is a half a unit bet and nothing else. But I don't think things get easier for Giannis when he has less good guys around him. That's just not how it works. Now the assists have gone up when he's in a situation that he's playing without Dame and Chris Middleton, but not anything else Uh, in the eight games without Chris. And this is a little bit skewed both ways because there's been a couple blowouts without Chris Middleton that they've gotten blown out and they've blown out teams. But in the eight games, 32 minutes, 28 points, seven, let's call it seven assists uh, and about 11, uh, 10 boards there for him when he's playing without 
Chris. So he ends up at about 46, 47 PRA without Middleton going up against a team that is the best at limiting what he wants to do all over the place. Like that is their whole defense is down low. The only power forward to have gotten 53 PRA against this team this season is Anthony Davis. If you want to call him that, if you want to look at centers, uh, it would basically be the same concept here. Like if you take AD out, there are no power forwards that do this against Minnesota. Now, is this the best power forward in the league? Probably. Almost definitely. Yes, he is. Uh, but with that in mind, uh, the fact that he needs to go to uh, the free throw line is one area that you were talking about. Yes, he might be at the free throw line 12 times tonight. Let's say he makes eight of them. Good with that. Now we're talking about needing a ton more, uh, right? So now you're talking about needing to get to about 34 points. That's about 17 more field goals made, despite the fact that he's at the line 12 times. How many field goal attempts is he going to get for like 30, 20, 25? Like you can't, you can't shoot the ball that many times, can he? He can, but I don't think he will. And the fact that this my Minnesota team, obviously like we know how good they are down low. Third fewest points per game, rebounds per game, fewest assists per game to power forwards. Uh, they are uh, the best defense basically inside of five feet, fewest uh, points per game allowed. Once you get into the rim, even in the last uh, five games where they haven't been as good at uh, limiting free throws, they still have the third best rim field goal percentage. So like you got to get to the rim if you're Giannis to score. You can do it a lot. I get it, uh, but I'll go ahead and take slow mo to help him out on the on the on the wing out there. Maybe put some ant on him on the three point line, and then just a barrage of dudes as soon as he gets anywhere within 17 feet. So let's say he gets the 32 points, 34 points in that range, and then he's still it's too much RA at that point for me in, in what should be a really slow mucky game. Your logic is sound. What you are not accounting for here is Tell vibes. Me. It's Tell vibes. Me. The Bucks. <laughs> The Bucks are just going to find a way to win this game, or at least, you know, it's just, it's just the, the impression I'm getting here. Coming back home, Minnesota is just not the same team on the road, either offensively or defensively down the stretch. It's true. And, 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 you know, the whistle starts going Giannis's way. Rudy gets in foul trouble. All of a sudden, it opens up. He gets more usage. Like And, and I mean, yeah, even if you do go by the numbers, he absolutely dominated the Wolves at home last year no cat or rudy for that game got to 51 pra in the matchup with cat and rudy had a triple double um and you know if he didn't miss 10 free throws then he would have gotten over this i think it's high enough to take the under and and feel sharp if you do it but yeah let's limit it to half a unit here because Giannis, like on top of this it's like what i was saying when he had all the turnovers against the suns like he's pressing he absolutely needs to go out there and and go balls to the wall after, you know, being a part of the coach getting fired and making this transition, and he's got to lead now. Like, he was publicly being like, oh, Adrian Griffin, what are you doing, basically? <laughs> and now you got to go out there, and you got to drop 35 every night with with peripheral stats, especially if your other two guys are out. Like, even if Dame's back in, he's still going to he's gonna shoot a ton here. Uh, so I, I think it's risky to go on, to fade him here. I actually prefer Dame to not play. Uh, for, mm-hmm. for this to go under just yeah. nobody, nobody that you, that you need to like, all of the reserves are flying at Giannis. It's like all the cavalry is just headed towards Giannis and everybody else is sort of left to do their own thing, to be honest. I mean, maybe some Brolo, Pat Connaughton, that Bobby Portis threes are on the way. I, the, the assists are super high for Giannis. It's a big part of this bet. It's wonderful that they're at like uh seven and a half, even eight and a half. If you want yeah. some decent money on your bet there. So they're expecting like him to be diming up in this situation, which he has been, but that's, that's too many. And without Dane, like it's just one fewer shooter. So yeah, it's, it's a half a unit to be able to say I faded Giannis correctly. That's really it. So that is all the time we have for you in this one though. Continue to follow along. Check out the best bets video that we have up for you today and each and every weekday as well. Until we see you next, happy betting. Step up, step up.